Lewis, you need to be quiet. Lewis, you need to be quiet. Hello and uh, welcome to uh, this Holiday Easter Kids Club. We hope uh, that you're going to join us over this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And over the week, we're going to be having some Bible stories. Uh, we're going to be having some uh, crafts, some colouring, and there'll be a family challenge uh, for you to do every day. As well as that, will also be a quiz. And over the week, if you join in, and you join in the family challenge and you fill in the quiz and you maybe send us your pictures or videos of you doing your colouring in and your video, then you'll get points. And of course, everybody knows what the points make. Points make prizes. So uh, we'll look forward to this week. Now, today, we're going to start off right at the very beginning. We're going to start off with the first man and woman in the Bible. Then you know what they're called? Well, it's on the screen in front of you, isn't it? It's Adam and Eve. So let's jump right into the story of the Bible right at the beginning and find out more. Well, Adam and Eve. The Bible tells us at the beginning, the whole of the world was just dark and it was just empty. And then out of that, God began to create. God created the birds and the, the, the cows. God created the light and the darkness. God created the sun, the moon, the stars and the sea. And every time he created something, whether it was the vegetation, whether it was the, the flowers or the vegetables, or whether it was the animals, or whether it was the sun or the sea or the sand or the surf, whatever it was, every time he says, it is good. But then on the last day, day number six of God's creation, God created man. He took him of the dust of the earth, and they take that dust. I wonder if you've ever played with mud puddles. I wonder if you've ever uh, formed uh, and you take some dust, mud uh, and you try to make it uh, into something a bit more beautiful than what it is. Maybe you've made mud pancakes. Maybe you've, uh, maybe you've uh, taken some uh, clay maybe even and you've tried to model it into something good. Now, most of us aren't very good at it, but God's amazing. God was able to take from the dust of the earth he was able to take and um, make clay. And out of that clay, he made man. A man with eyes, a man with a nose, a man with ears and eyes, a, a man with a heart that beat, lungs that breathed in, muscles to carry him around, to lift things, and strong legs to run around. And when God looked on Adam, made in his own image, he says, it's not good. He said, it's very good. I, I don't know whether, uh, you know, when I think about myself, Oh, my back's getting a wee bit sore and, and my knees are getting a wee bit clicky uh, and I'm getting a bit tired and a wee bit old. And, oh, it doesn't feel very good. But when God looked down on Adam, he was a prime specimen of a man. And God looked down on Adam and he said, it is very good. That's brilliant, isn't it? A world created in six days and it was good. And he then created Adam. And when he created Adam in his image, he said, it's not just good, it's very good. And Adam was really the pinnacle, the height of God's creation. And, and, and so are you. Uh, and so, despite my baldiness and despite my age, so am I. Well, what a place Adam lived in. I wonder if you know what it was called. It was called the Garden of Eden. Can you see some of the animals that might have been there? Maybe there was a big buffalo or a big bison. Maybe there was a beautiful butterfly with its symmetrical patterns on its wings. Maybe there's a wee koala bear or a iguana or maybe some other kind of lizard or maybe the leopard or the cheetah that's in the middle of the picture. Well, none of them had names at that point and God gave Adam a very important job. It was Adam's job to give all of the different animals their names because he was the boss of all creation. 
It's a very, very responsible job, isn't it, to be the boss of this whole world? You know, that reminds us, that's one of the reasons we need to look after this planet. We need to try to use less plastic. I hope you recycle all your cardboard and you look after it and you minimise. And I hope you don't leave the lights on when you're not in. Not only does Dad have a big electricity bill to pay, but it's bad for the planet. And, you know, human beings have got a big responsibility to look after the planet that God created. Well, Adam has the head of the creation and he gave them all their names and he knew all about them as he lived with them in this paradise earth. But Adam wasn't alone. Adam had a beautiful, um, a beautiful wife. And as he was out there in the creation, oh, he would enjoy it. He would see the birds flying by in the sky. He would maybe see all the weird and wonderful animals that we don't have anymore. Is that a triceratops? Is that a diplodocus? I'm not sure. But he would have all these different animals. But the one that he loved most was his beautiful wife, Eve. She had been created uh, out of the, a rib from his side, created by God as a special friend and a special uh, helper for him. They would live together in harmony. She would help him and he would help her and they would love each other and they would live together in a paradise earth. What could possibly go wrong? Eh, wouldn't that be brilliant? Wouldn't you like to live in a place as beautiful as where Adam and Eve started off? But even though it all started off good and got very good, it was about to get bad. Because God had given them one instruction. I don't know how good you are at keeping the rules in, my house, in your house. In my house, there's loads of rules. Put the toilet seat down, switch the light off when you come out the room, wash up the dishes afterwards, clean up your room, do your homework. There's lots of rules, isn't there? Don't fight with your big brother and sister. Don't uh, flush your little brother's head down the toilet. All those sorts of things. There's lots of rules, isn't there? If we're all going to live together happily. But in the Bible, in the, in, the, in the Garden of Eden, there was only one rule. And that rule was that there was a tree, a tree in the centre of the garden. And it was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they were told, listen, God said to them, you can eat of all the lovely, delicious fruits in the whole of this garden. Any one of them. Help yourself. Knock yourself out. Take as much as you like. But the garden, the tree in the centre of the garden, the fruit of that tree, you mustn't touch it. Because the day that you eat that, that tree, of the fruit of that tree, you will certainly die. So I'm sure they would have said, well, we're keeping away from that tree, aren't we? Well, just keep well away from that. We don't want anything to do with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we'll enjoy our paradise. And we'll enjoy the sunshine and the beautiful animals and my beautiful wife. And we'll all be happy. And if it had stayed like that, my goodness, it would have been very, very good. But one day, Eve was out in the garden. And there came a slippery, slimy, slithery snake. And this slippery, slimy, slithery snake came to Eve and he, he said to her, has God said that, that you're not allowed to, to eat of that tree? Uh, and, and she says, yes. She says, we're not allowed to eat of that tree because uh, we'll, we'll surely die. And he says, God's not said that. Uh, are you sure that's really what God said? Do, do you think God's really got your best interest at heart? Do you not think maybe God's hiding something from you? Do you not think maybe God's trying to trick you or trying to, trying to hide something that's good and keep it from you? Do you think God's really good? Do you think God's really giving you everything you need? Look at that lovely tree. Oh, look at the fruit. It's so red and luscious. Oh, that'll be juicy, won't it? And Eve says to herself, do you know what? It does look like a good tree. It looks beautiful. It looks great. I, I wouldn't mind taking just, just a little bit. Maybe if I just touch it. Uh, maybe if I just hold it. Maybe if I just give it a wee squeeze. Oh, uh, do you think one little bite would do any harm? And suddenly, the slippery, slimy, slithery snake that was a, uh, was, was a, a fallen, wicked angel that had fallen from heaven. 
and he deceived Eve into disobeying God, to breaking God's law, even though he'd done so many good things for her. And she took of the tree and she gave it. She rushed off and she took it to Adam. And Adam should have said, no, Eve, you know that we are not allowed to eat that. I'm not having any of it. But what did he do? He had some as well. He was the boss of the house. He was the boss of creation. He should have said, no, you've made a wee mistake. Well, tell God we're sorry. We'll stop there. But he took some as well. And then they remembered, oh, no. What were we told? The day wherein you eat of that, you'll surely die. And so the God who used to talk with him in the garden, the God who used to say hello in the morning and, and walk around with him in the garden, says, Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam was hidden because he'd realised that he was naked. He wasn't wearing any clothes. And he said, the woman you gave me, she, she gave me and she's tricked me into eating this fruit. And God said, you've broken my law. Uh, and you've not done, you've done what I told you not to do. And so he says, you can't be in my paradise garden anymore. And, and so Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden. And God was good enough to provide them with clothes to cover their cold, naked bodies. And they were thrown out of that beautiful garden paradise. And a world that had been sweetness and light became a world where we have sorrow where things sometimes don't go well and there's disease and there's death and there's coronavirus and there's hunger and all of these things and it's all because the world is not the way that it was supposed to be adam and eve they went their own way they broke god's rules and as a result of that they were thrown out of the garden well that was a big mistake wasn't it but the bible tells us that we've all sinned and fell short of god's standard we can look at Adam and even say, oh, they were bad, weren't they? But do you know what? We're all the same. But do you know the good news is God provided a way for their sin to be, their shame to be covered. And two little animals, they gave their skins to cover Adam and Eve. Just like later on we'll learn about how the Lord Jesus, he gave himself to die for our sins so that we could have our sins forgiven. Our shame could be covered and we could be right with God. And we'll learn more about that as we go through the rest of the week. So I hope you've been listening. The quiz will be on Adam and Eve. And if you fill in the quiz, uh, and then remember, do your uh, do your uh, uh, your craft and your pictures, send them in to us uh, on here, uh, and you will be able uh, to get points. And remember, points make prizes. So we'll see you uh, later on uh, with uh, your challenges uh, and with your, your quizzes and with your crafts and colouring. So have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow morning.